Life, America's most talked about program. Well, tonight, three great stars of TV's famous Brown Derby restaurant to film a TV spot announcement. So we're going to cut in on their camera now and watch one of them get the surprise of his life. Ralph Edwards walks in on him. Here we are. It'll be here. Well, uh, Hello to everybody. This is me, Jerry Lewis. That's my partner, Demon, And this is Uncle Milty Burl Milton. <laughs> we're at the Brown Derby because we want to tell you, ladies. Well, actually, the reason we're here is because I'm hungry. Yeah, Let's hungry. eat Let's something. Eat some. I'll have a little flour. Yeah, Just some flour. We're here for a reason. What do you mean? Oh, because yes. we're going to do this muscular dystrophy thing from, from New York about the 29th and the 30th. And telethon. the reason we, yeah, telethon. The reason we asked Mr. Milton Berg because he's the first one that did a telethon, right? That's right, and he and is the man that knows so much about telethons, and we figured he'd be the best man to tell you folks about. So, Milton, about. you tell the people all about this one. I'd be telethon. very glad to if you get through talking. I'm sorry, oh, Gilbert. Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dean and Jerry are really preparing a tremendous show on June 29th at Carnegie Hall for the muscular dystrophy. Will you stop hours. talking, please? I'm just trying to, I'm sorry. Got to tell you. This is a 24-hour show for muscular dystrophy on behalf of uh, the muscular... ...kids that are depending upon us to do the best... Hi, boys. Hi, Ralph. Hi. How are you? Hi, Hi Ralph. Ralph. Nah. Dean, you were right? expecting me, weren't Why, you? Why, yeah. this is your wife. No. <laughs> You were expecting me. I don't know about, about you. Were you expecting oh, me, no, Melly? No, I wasn't expecting you. You weren't expecting me? No, what is this? <laughs> Boy, for four years we've been waiting to catch you. Tonight, Milton Burl, this is your life. <laughs> I swear to heavens, they got me down here. There is no such telethon. No. Yeah, there is a such telethon, but we didn't need you to tell anyone about it. Down any isn't that right, Jerry? He's around all the time. Uh, my goodness grace. Well, we're going to be on our way here. Before we grab the car, though, on our way over to the theater, I want to thank Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. God bless you, boys. Thank the you, Ralph. swung it without you. Good luck on the muscular dystrophy telethon on June, June 29th. 29th. <laughs> right on. Okay. And Irving Gray, your... Uh, uh, where's Irving? Personal Irving. manager here, and uh, uh, thank you very much, executive producer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Irving, thanks for all your help. Now, come along. Uh, we're going to be on our way over to the El Cap. Thanks, Dean Martin. Yeah. Well, come along with us. Here we go. You In the meantime, here's our good friend, Bob Warren. Here we go, Milton. Now, here they are. It's principal Boys subject, girls. Milton Burr. Here he is. Sit down, will you please, in our chair of honor, Milton. Oh. You know, the payoff on this whole deal is that last night on Milty's program, he did a takeoff on This Is Your Life, mm -hmm. never dreaming that tonight he'd be the subject. As a matter of fact, we figured it would work for us. Uh, uh, this Is Your Life, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Yeah. Because if anything came up about This Is Your Life, you would think it had to do with last night's show. That's right. Uh, I, I'm uh, overtaken. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Let's begin the story of a human dynamo, the star of vaudeville and nightclubs who made television history as the first great star of television. This is your life, <laughs> Milton Berle. It's summer, or rather it's springtime, 1908, and before you're even born, your future... Uh, father's the, uh, he's in the paint business, Milton. Yes, right. What'd your mother do? My mother was... Uh, a uh, detective. When you're of school age, you're known as that uh, fresh kid in your neighborhood, convoyed by three older brothers, Phil, Frank, and Jack Burl. And here's the mob. <laughs> Today, uh, Frank and Jack are members of your TV production staff, and Phil is a program executive at NBC. Do you remember Milton's uh, first acting, Phil? Well, I sure do. We made, uh, we saved money with Milton at that time. Uh, how'd you do that? Well, Milton used to make uh, faces in the mirror, and we had an uncle living with us that uh, it got on his nerves, see, and 
My uncle, <laughs> my uncle Joe, yeah. <laughs> sort of a permanent guest there. That's right. Well, uh, uh, how, how'd you save money, though, that way? Well, our uncle moved out. Oh. <laughs> a partnership which was to become a uh, legend in show business was coming along, but in... When, Mil then. when Milton uh, won a contest imitating Charlie Chaplin, that's when Mom's eyes really lit up. And uh, that was the real beginning of a partnership between Mom and Milton. Yes, a partnership which was to become, as I say, a legend in show business. How did Mom get you your first uh, <laughs> uh, paying job in vaudeville, Milton? Well, uh, uh, I was about uh, five years old. And the, uh, this is back in 1913, and uh, Charlie Chaplin was the... Uh, big rage at the time it made pictures like the rink and all the you know the one realers and yeah. there was a charlie chaplin contest i remember and uh, it was held up in mount vernon and i happened to be uh, uh masquerading in father's outfit i <laughs> took my father's pants and i cut up my father's uh, my mother's uh, fur muff and i m put some mucilage on me and uh, i took a big chrysanthemum a rose <laughs> Uh, and I planted it in uh, in my lapel, and I took my father's derby, and I think I took my Uncle Joe's cane, and uh, I hobbled down the street, uh, and it was uh, it was Thanksgiving Day, and a lot of people were following me, and this one man saw this uh, little uh, dopey child do this, and he followed me back me back to uh, to where I lived, and he walked in, and he said to my mother, Sarah, that was Mama's <laughs> name before she changed it. And uh, to Sandra, and uh, she, he said, uh, "I'd like this little boy to enter a contest." And the contest uh, was held in uh, Mount Vernon. Yeah. And uh, was this man's name E. W. Wolf? No, this was not E. W. This is a little later after E. W. Wolf. I see. This is before E. W. Wolf. Yeah. This was up in the Bronx. And I see. E. W. Wolf was the man who saw you when you were entertaining the soldiers. I was entertaining right? the soldiers at Camp Upton and Camp Dix during the First World War, and this E. W. Wolf uh, saw me. He's from Philadelphia. He was yeah. from Philadelphia, <laughs> and he put me in a kid act called The Melody of Youth. And I was in a, sh uh, a lot of kid acts for him, tidbits and tingling. And yeah. well, Milton wasn't bashful about being a boy actor, was he, Jack? No, as a matter of fact, he uh, got a lot of people together to spread the news around. Uh, <laughs> when Milton <laughs> was being confirmed at the temple, that was his bar mitzvah, yes. he, uh, after the ceremony was over, Rabbi said, now, if you really want to see your bar mitzvah boy, he's playing seven blocks away from here at the Al Hamba <laughs> Theater. <laughs> Mom got your parts in the early silent pictures, Perils of Pauline and all that. Thank you, Phil, Frank, and Jack Burrell. You'll see Brother Milton a little later. age 10, you were offered your first job in vaudeville. And uh, now this, uh, how did uh, mom uh, manage that? Oh, that's when, uh, that's when she took you to the army yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah, I played all the army camps for the, uh, for the boys, and I was known as the, uh, the sh Oh, yeah. <laughs> or uh, 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 Al Jolson's second. <laughs> and uh, or the second Al Jolson and I entertained all, all the camps. And meanwhile, your baby sister's been born, but Mom takes her right along with you on the road to give you a chance. This yeah. is when uh, Mr. Wolf hired you as a partner in this children's act. Right. And you went on the road. After long months, your mom hears that the Schuberts are reviving a hit of earlier years on Broadway. Tell me, pretty maiden, are there a few? There are a few, kind sir, but simple girls and proper too. Now those are two of the voices who sang that song with you 36 years ago, Melton, in 1920, when you were 12 years old. You remember the show? Well, I don't know if they were the kids. Or the... One is a friend you haven't seen in 26 years. This is from Floridora. She was then Miriam Batista from oh. Westport, Connecticut, where oh. she now conducts her dance your way to glamour school, Mrs. Uh, Lloyd Rosamond. And the second of your party in 20 from New York City, famous radio and TV ben moderator, Brow. newsman, editor, big story, Mr. Ben Brower oh. and Miss Rosamond. <laughs> And we're wearing the same costume. You can remember how you look when we all yeah. sang. You think of your sketch now. Just look at that picture of us all the way we were together in 1920. Yeah. Which, yeah. One's, which one's Milton? Milton. Milton. <laughs> which one is Milton? <laughs> way over at the end. There 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 right right at the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was mugging. Right. I'll, I'll, there's a great story goes with this if you want to hear it. Uh, can we hold it just no. for a second? No, no, I'd like to tell it. All right. <laughs> no, no, I'll hold it. 
handle it. I'll Go ahead. But I remember a quickie, Milton, in the dressing room one night, you said, I'm going to be tops in this business. My mama says so. That's, that's right. What's the story, Milton? Well, the story was opening night in, in this Floridora sextet. We all did the same dance. It was the Floridora sextet mm -hmm. step. And my mother took me on the side uh, before we went on. She said, look, uh, what foot do all the kids start with? Uh, when they make their entrance, and I said, they, we start on our left foot. She said, well, when we start, when you walk on tonight, use your right foot. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, Mama, what do you mean, use my right foot? I'll be out of step. She said, that's the idea. <laughs> and I was all out of step. They were all out of step but Milton, and uh, so Mama's I could get split. the attention. And uh, no, do you remember no, that no, night? Afraid of. <laughs> and uh, I'll never, that was 1920. Yes, indeed. And Mrs. Lloyd yes, Rosamond yes. and Ben Grau, the original yes, Florida yes. sex set with Melody. We'll see so you a little later there. <laughs> and Mommy of yours is pretty smart, you know, with that other stuff there. After Floridora, you and Mom land a deal. She lands another deal for you, this time a double act that gives you name billing. Excuse me, is this the office of David Velasco? <laughs> Well, now that should uh, hark back to the opening lines of your act. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> With a my voice Elizabeth you first heard... Elizabeth Kennedy. 33 years ago. It's the girl who toured for four years with you in the hit act of Kennedy and Burl. Here from Chicago is Elizabeth Kennedy, now Mrs. Al Schneider. <laughs> and here's Elizabeth. Oh, Whoa. Oh. Up a little. Did you ever feel in those young days that Milton would be the great star he is, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm sure I did. He was always a great performer and a great showman. I can remember a time when the last scene of our act was a, a parting scene of a brother and sister. And I would walk off backstage with my arms outstretched. Mm -hmm. And I, one time I, I backed off and I, I stepped on a spotlight. And the spotlight came crashing down and knocked me out cold. And this time the curtain had closed and the audience was applauding and... Burl came running off, and he grabbed a hold of me, picked me up, and took me out, and bowed me. And then he bowed himself, and he bowed me, and then he bowed himself, and then he got off stage, and he said, Hey, Kennedy, are you hurt? <laughs> And they say, I've got a memory. Oh. How do you like it? Thank you, Elizabeth Kennedy Milton, oh, first professional partner in Sal Schneider's Chicago. <laughs> We're hitting the high points. We're at 1925 now. You're 17 and too tall to stay in the act with Elizabeth Kennedy. Remember what Mom told you to do about that? No? Stoop a little? Well, now, I remember that very well. My mother, that's the reason sometimes I look, uh, you know, so round-shouldered on really? the screen. And not for money weighing <laughs> me. But uh, my, I got too tall to appear with Elizabeth and I started, uh, she said, well, stoop in your shoulders because uh, it'll, uh, when we get on the train, we can still pass you for half fare. <laughs> now, uh, you and Mom hit the road again with you in your first single act and Mom always sitting in the audience. What did your mom always do to make sure that the audience responded to your act, Milton? Well, uh, the audiences actually never knew that my mother was my mother when she was seated out in the audience. Don't I know. I sat in the low state and laughed and didn't realize it. Was <laughs> and uh, she, uh, when the jokes were dying and I died on the stage and flopped many times in great towns like Steubenville and Canton and different places. <laughs> and uh, uh, she used to sit out in the audience and laugh, yeah. uh, even when the jokes weren't, weren't good. And uh, she had a very infectious laugh, and I used to point to her and say, uh, which joke are you working on? I used to throw all the stock lines. There must be people out there I hear breathing. And I said, lady, uh, will you change your seat and sit over there or come down front? And no matter how tough some of those audiences used to be, and they were, it was my, my beloved yeah. the mother who uh, really milked the laughs for me. And uh, by her laughing, she got the audience to laugh at her, eventually laughing at me. And these are lonely years for your mom, away from the rest of her family, but she made a small hotel room into a home every night for you and your little sister. I'll never forget. I remember the really tough years when I was little and on tour with Mom and Milton. Well, you'll know that voice, Milton. Your yeah. sister, Rosalind, here from her home in Miami Beach, Florida, is Mrs. Charles Wigderson. Here's Ron. <laughs> here's the oh, what were the tough times like, Rosalind? Oh, well, <laughs> well, I can remember days when we split one egg for breakfast. How about it? One egg, that's right. And, uh, well, a few nights, many of them, that uh, Mom, Milton, and I all shared, we tried to share, one upper berth. And there's nothing like sleeping with Milton's foot in your face. <laughs> Mom was always proud of Milton, wasn't she, uh, Rosalind? 
she was very proud of him. And why not? Yeah. <laughs> we all are. But, you know, Ralph, she had a special way of answering the telephone. How's Do that? you remember what Mother used to say? Uh, hello, this is uh, oh, Mrs. Oh, yeah. Burrow. Yeah, hello. Uh, well, it reminds me, I, I'm, I'm so mixed up. That it's, <laughs> imagine Burrow without an answer. I was going to say this. <laughs> show business history, ladies and gentlemen. Burl without an out and She said, hello, this is Milton Burl's mother. <laughs> Put him on. Oh. Thank you, Rosalind, for flying in from Miami Beach oh, to be you. with Milty tonight. <laughs> Wonderful family. Now, look, there are more big surprises ahead of you, Milton Burl, and more unexpected people from a career that sped along ever faster and ever funnier. Back to This Is Your Life, Milton Burl, the baby destined for show business, the little boy who knew got there, the top. 1930, at only 21, you reached the pinnacle of vaudeville with your single act, the Palace Theater, New York City. Someone who remembers you then wants to speak to you. Now, hear from her engagement at the Rancho Don Carlos in Winnipeg, Canada, herself, a well-remembered subject on This Is Your Life, author of I'll Cry Tomorrow, is Lillian Roth. Hey, Milty, darling. I wish I could be with you. You know, I'm way up in wonderful Winnipeg, Canada, but I'm still with you. You know, I like to think back to the days when we were kids together, professional children's school. Remember the feuds? I'd go out and buy Mommy a hanky, and you'd go out and get your Sandra, too. And then I'd get a ring for Mother, and you'd get a bracelet and a ring for yours. And then when we finally made it, remember the thrill when we gave our mothers mink coats? <laughs> well, one day our feud was over, and I needed help. And, Milty, I'll never forget your words. One star, always a star. They help. Thank you. Many happy tomorrow. Have them too. Bye, Milton. Thank you, Lillian Roth. Way up there in Winnipeg. In the 1930s, Milton, your name in a vaudeville theater or nightclub is a surefire guarantee of sellout business. The joy you get from facing any audience is so great that you often find yourself entertaining for free in hotel lobbies, barber shops, even in nightclubs where you're just a customer. Well, I know that many of Milton Berle's greatest performances because he did it for weeks to help me. The voice of a great young comedian, he opens tomorrow at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas. So yes, he's star of his own television show, Where's... too. Dollar a second here from Las Vegas is your friend Jan Murray. Oh, you, are... you didn't get in touch with me. Oh. Milton helped he... a lot of young comedians, didn't he, Jan? He certainly did, and he still does, Ralph. But I, I just, Milton, I want to just bring up one quick incident that maybe you have forgotten. I want to tell the folks how you and I met at the Martinique years ago. Don't say the Lakewood one. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I was peering, Ralph, at the La Martinique. I was just a kid. It was my first big assignment. I was coming in there after Danny Kaye's station. I was nervous and scared, and, and if the truth must be told, I didn't have a good act. And, you know, all these... Uh, hard critics were sitting out there, these tough New York audiences, and I went out for about 10 or 15 minutes. I really died. And Milton Burrow was there as a customer, sitting out front, and he had a great deal of heart and sympathy. He understood what I was going through, and he started to kid me, and, and he opened it up, and I started to answer him. Before you knew it, there was a lot of laughs, and I, I didn't go off in disgrace. So after the show, I knew Milton Burrow's a great star. I admired him for so long. I went over to the table, and, and I, uh, I introduced myself, thanked Milton, and this guy, made an appointment with me, this busy man, a great star, was at the Zigfield Follies at the time, made an appointment for the following day he spent. He helped me with my act, revised my act, gave me new material. And more important, Ralph, he showed up every night for a little tough getting started, getting business into the club. Milton came in every night for two weeks, and when I got around New York, that Milton Burrow was there performing and helping and working with Jan Murray. Before you know it, the place was jumping every night, and it was really the first break I ever got in my life. Now, close, good friends, and I'll tell you how I feel about him, how much I love him, that I resent that I wasn't brought out with his brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jan Murray. Good luck. 1946, you open at the Carnival Club in New York. 46 weeks, you make nightclub history with the longest sustained run and probably the highest salary ever paid to a club entertainer up to that time. When you're signed as MC of a new television show, Texaco Star Theater, no one realizes that a phenomenon is about to happen. I was one of the first guest stars. As a matter of fact, I made my first TV appearance with this mad, impetuous fool. Oh, I don't mean to ask you. That is... Silver yes, belt. television Sergeant Bilko, here from New York by way of Las Vegas, is the pal of your youth who, like you, Milton, achieved stardom in television in his first year on his own show, Mr. Phil Silver. Here he is. Oh. 
Oh, is it? This is all you're knocking me down. Oh, sit down. <laughs> What's it like? Working with Milton on the Texaco Star Theater film. What's it like? It's like uh, being in an air raid with a paper hat. <laughs> but you see, Milton is a perfectionist, and he's dedicated that the laugh must come off with precision. And so in the Texaco show, Milton ran the lights, rehearsed the camera, showed the musicians, did everything but the laundry. And what might be interesting to you, Ralph, is while I was working for Milton as his guest star, I was gathering material for a show that was forthcoming called Top Banana, which I fashioned after Milton. And at that time, the words top banana were not too well known, and now it's part of our American wordage. Yes. And uh, one day, playing golf with Milton, he saw the notice that I was to do a show called Top Banana, and Milton said, Phil, what does that mean, Top Banana? And I thought, well, I bet there are too many rail birds around I like to be vicious. So I told him with as much compassion as I could, I said, Milton is about a fellow who's been on the stage since babyhood, dedicated to the laugh at anybody's expense. The laugh must come. The audience must be entertained. So we have it into what passes as a normal human being. And Milton looked at me and says, Phil, I know fellas just like that. <laughs> the results of your TV show, Milton, are astounding. Business falls off on Tuesday nights, movie attendance drops. Tuesday becomes Burl's Day. Isn't that right, Phil Silver? Well, until last year, yes. <laughs> I say that Milton and I, they've tried to create a few with this. They, they haven't got a chance in a minute. This is the man, single-handedly responsible for more sale of television sets than any other individual in the history of show business. He paved the way for whatever glory we may be sharing. We should all be eternally grateful, Milton. Thank you, Phil Silver. Thanks so much. 1949, 1950, you do the first telethon in history and many other shows. You, always, you, you can always be counted on to do a benefit for a worthy cause. And it was Milton Burrow who helped in the first Fight for Sight campaign to gather dollars for research to prevent and cure blinding eye diseases. The voice of a girl who lost her sight and who was the founder of the National Council to uh, Combat Blindness. Here from New Mildred. York, Mildred Weisenfeld. Hey! I'm so happy to be here What about this guy? Oh, Ralph, it was in 1949, the fight for sight that was conceived by a handful of us ourselves, faced with, bl with blindness, was desperately in need of funds. And, and we put on a great benefit show, that is, we wanted to, to, to raise dollars, but we couldn't, we didn't have a star, we didn't know we had a turn, we couldn't mm -hmm. sell a ticket. And we knew at that time that there was only one person big enough that could help turn the top television himself. And Milton, I wonder if you remember when I dashed into the studio where you rehearsed your weekly television shows. And although you were involved in a thousand and one things, you stopped and you said, Milton. And when I finished, I'll never forget what it meant to me and mine when you said, Mildred, I'll be there. And Milton, you were there. Not only that year to make it one of the greatest benefits, but for six years, year after year, and Mom was there too. And I want to say this evening, Milton, God bless you and... And we're so grateful, and those people who may one day be spared from blindness because of you are here with me tonight, I know. Thank you, Miss Mildred Weisenfeld. <laughs> the fight for science. Thank you. 1953, you grow more relaxed, mellow, and happy. of a wonderful girl, and you marry her on December 9th, 1953. And here she is, the former Ruth Cosgrove, your wife, Mrs. Milton Burrell. Here to <laughs> husband over there, Ruth. You got a surprise when you first met Milton, didn't you, Ruth? Yes, Ralph. I, I expected him to be kind of a, a crazy character, which he is, but <laughs> he's sweet and wonderful, and I love him. Good. As <laughs> proud of you as Ruth is, as your young daughter, Vicki Burl. She sends you a big hug and kiss from New York because school exams made it impossible for her to be here tonight. Time in This Is Your Life History, we just plain ran out of time. So, our subject back to open our next week's show. And here's how it went. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to This Is Your Life. Now, I'm sure that most of you know that time ran out on us. So wonderful was our subject's life and so packed with events and people. Finish our show and present him with the surprises planned for his future. So we've asked this great guy and his lovely wife to return tonight. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Milton Burrell. Here they are. Right? Thank you. I just can't tell you how wonderful it was. Letters from all over the country, people... If they can love you more, they do, Mildy. Right. You're really great. You know, this is uh, you're 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 a pioneer in television. This is another pioneering thing, really, for you 
certainly is for us. This is the first time this has ever happened on This Is Your Life, where we've had to go into the next week. And we're very grateful to both of you for coming here tonight. Milton, at this moment, a week ago, let's see, Ruth was seated right over there. Do you want to go over there, Ruth? And Milton, you were right beside your lovely wife. Stage this exactly as it was, you see. You were sort of dazed with surprise, I know, old boy. I was. <laughs> and unbelief, weren't you? Well, uh, quite a lot. Uh, well, look at my nails. They're growing back now. Uh, well, the great line was, he says, imagine Burl without, word, uh, without anything to say, you know. That people have been talking about that the privilege and the honor of having you here was certainly ours, uh, Milton Burl. Thank you very much. Now, Milton, so you can relive your reunion with your family and friends, this seems like the end of the show. Don't go away if you've just tuned in, ladies and gentlemen. This is the beginning. Crest will present you with a sound film of the whole program. For Mrs. Burl, Ruth uh, Marshall Jewelers of New York City uh, have created this gold charm bracelet with each charm marking a step you took uh, Milton to the very top of show business. Your theatrical club, Milton. Thank you very much. The famous Friars Club means a lot to you, we know. After years of leadership as Abbott, your fellow members elected you Abbott Emeritus of the club. Great, high honor. Crest has commissioned the nationally known artist David Immerman to paint your portrait, and that portrait of you will hang in a place of honor in the new Friars Club building in New York City. Studio 6B at NBC New York is where you started your first great TV series, Milton. Oh, no. In appreciation of your great contribution to our industry, NBC is erecting a bronze plaque outside Studio 6B, which will say, in this studio, Mr. Television, Milton Berle, made television history. Oh. A dedication ceremony will be held when you return to New York. Milton Thank you very much. And Milton, there's another portrait which David Immerman has completed and brought here to unveil tonight. Uh, we didn't want to keep it from you last week, so we did show you right. this last so week, and wonderful. pictures were taken wonderful. shown all over America. No face could be dearer to you than the one whose image he has captured. Here is a gift to you from Crest. is a painting of your beloved mother, your mom, Sarah Berlinger. And isn't it a wonderful, wonderful thing? Come on, Mr. Mother. Hello, David. David Immerman. Hello, Mr. Help me. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is your life, Milton Berl. A good laugh is sunshine for the spirit and lengthens life, they say. Through your wit and humor, you've given this priceless gift of laughter to your fellow man. God bless you.